Facebook or YouTube or wherever you watch this at. I'm on LinkedIn, Instagram. I don't even know all of them. I, I can't keep up with them all. The world's gotten real social, hasn't it? Yes, it to has. To be so it's unsocial. It's got real media. But you know what I look at it as? I was sitting down in the hospital last week, and this lady got on to me about my phone, this older lady. She said, what would you do before you had that phone? And I sat there and just listened to her for a few minutes. And she was like, she said, I see you with a devil's device in your hand. I didn't argue back with her. I, you know, I'd be respectful. I was thinking, lady, I'm preaching to thousands of people around the earth. This thing has been a blessing to us. I didn't have to get a plane ticket and fly into Pakistan or India or anywhere else. That's right. I'm talking to thousands of people around the world without even buying a plane ticket. You know, maybe the devil's device in some people's hands, but if it's in my hand, whatever's in your hand, that's if you're right. a righteous person, you're going to do right. righteous things. That's, that's right. right. Exactly and right. And that's just the way it goes. Yes, so sir. I believe that God is using it. Yeah. Saved me a lot of time. At least I'm using it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, I want you to look at Psalm 68 this morning because I want to talk to you about, I think I want to call this the set family, but I want you to know something. When we began Beyond Church, I vowed a vow to the Lord. I said, God, I will give one year of my complete time, attention, devotion, and focus to Beyond Church. And beyond that, Whatever you want to do is whatever you want to do. Do whatever you will, but I will commit and vow this one year. And today is marks a year. So I'm telling you this because you need to be prepared at any moment. Because I'm preparing. Mm -hmm. I'm preparing that at any moment that God can call me and April away from here. Mm -hmm. He can call us into somewhere else in the earth, somewhere else in the United States. I don't know. You need to be prepared for that. And why do I say that? Because as a family, it has been my job as a spiritual father to prepare my family to be mature sons and daughters mm -hmm. who are able to maintain the household. Mm -hmm. Able to maintain the household. I want you to look with Psalm 68 with me and verse 6. Let's look at verse 5. It tells us that God is a father to of the fatherless mm -hmm. and a judge of widows. It's God in, the, in his holy habitation. I wanted to point to verse 6 to you today. God sets the solitary in families. Say that with me. God sets, God sets the solitary in families. The solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. April, could you advance that to the... I've only got that next slide, and it's the scriptures that are on it, because I want you to be able to, to look at it and see it. Let's look at that again. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those which are bound with chains, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God sets the solitary in families. The Amplified says that God places the solitary in families and gives the desolate. Wow, it just went away. He gives the desolate something. <laughs> that computer got his mind of its own. So what I want to talk to you about here is the season. The season. What is the season that we have entered into? I've been talking to you for many weeks about the new season in the earth. A season is this. A season with God is the recovery of biblical truth. The recovery of biblical truth. A recovery of biblical truth. That is a season. That marks a new season for us in the earth. Yeah. Thank you, April. You got that back for me. He gives the desolate a home in which to dwell. He leads the prisoners out to prosperity, yes, but the rebellious dwell, yes. it just don't like that page, in a dry land. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> so what is this new season about? What is this new season about? You know, a couple of weeks ago, I talked to you about that there were three times that you were to appear before the Lord. God said, if you're in covenant with me, you're to appear three times before me. 
Once was at Passover, second was at Pentecost, and the third was you were to appear at the day of, or the Feast of Tabernacles. I've told many of you, you've had your Passover. You've had your Passover. The, the blood of the Lamb is over Thank your door you. of your life. You, many Lord. of you have entered into the second day that you were to appear before the Lord, and that was the day of Pentecost, the day when the Spirit was poured out. But many people have not appeared before the Lord in this third day. And this third day is a day of tabernacles. It is a day when you would come under the covering of your father. Your father would build a temporary dwelling. And you would come under and you would eat bread under that temporary covering. The day of and the feast of tabernacles is upon us. That season is upon us. God sets those that are solitary, those that are alone, those that are desolate. He puts them in families. What is this season about? I believe this is a season where God is restoring the family. This is going to be the season when God restores the family. If ever in our nation we needed something restored, it would be the family. Amen. The family is in such a mess. Yeah. That's why the nation is in such a mess. Amen. Whenever you look into any culture, you look into to any lineage. Whenever there has not been proper fathers, you will see destruction. You will see devastation. That's right. Yes, sir. This is a season where we're going to enter into a time of fathers and sons. Yes, it is. When God closed the book of Malachi in the Old Testament, he left us with this thing. This is what he said. That he would send the spirit of Elijah. He would send Elijah. I said he would send Elijah. Yes. And he said, he will turn the hearts of fathers to the children yeah. and the children to the fathers, lest I smite the earth with a curse. We can see that when you open to the New Testament, that God sent his son. Yeah. He sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, mm -hmm. and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. Yeah. The Bible tells us in Hebrews that Jesus is, he is the image of, he is the expressed image of the Father. He is the expressed image of God. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. Have I been with you so long, Philip, that you have not known me? He said, I don't do anything except what the Father does. I don't say anything except what the Father says. He is the complete and perfect image of God. If you yeah. want to see the Father, then you will have to look at the Son. That's right. This is a time when God is going to restore the family. He's going to restore fathers and sons. He's going to turn the hearts of fathers. Yeah. When I'm talking to you about fathers, I'm telling you that there have been fathers in the earth. There have been those that have been spiritual fathers in the earth. There have been those that are fathers of the faith. But they may not have had a heart towards sons and daughters. This is going to be a time of turning. What does that mean? That God's going to change people's hearts. Yeah. This isn't going to be about trying to build a big church. This isn't going to be about trying to build a big ministry. This isn't going to be about trying to build your name. This is going to be about you building up the sons of God. This is going to be about you raising up sons. This is going to be about the maturing of the sons. Yeah. We've had in the past, we've had shepherding movements, and many of you probably even heard, of spiritual fathering. You know, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 4 and 15, uh, Paul told the Corinthian church there, he said, you've had 10,000 instructors, but you haven't had many fathers. He said, for this reason, I have, I have become your father in the Lord. For this reason, I have begotten you in the Lord. You have to be begotten of a father. You have to be begotten of a father. What does that mean? You may be born of a woman. Jesus was born of a woman, right. but he was the only begotten son yeah. of God. Right. You, have yeah. to be, you have to be raised of a father. Yeah. You have to be lifted of a father. Yeah. You, have to, you have to receive an identity from a father. That's where you receive your identity. You may receive a nurturing from your mother, but you have to receive an identity from a father. Yeah. Many people do not know who they are on the earth. Many people in the body of Christ, they do not know who they are because they do not have a father to identify. What I'm trying to tell you is, even though we have many people who are born again in this day, we have, the church has an orphan mindset. What do I mean by that? I mean that when Adam sinned, when Adam fell, he became orphaned in his mind from God. He became separated or fatherless. That's right. Amen. The Bible tells us that we are to visit the fatherless. It doesn't say the orphan, it says the fatherless. That's right. My message today, my message in the earth, my message in the season is I'm going to the fatherless. Yes. I'm going to the fatherless to tell them mm -hmm. that God is turning not only the hearts of fathers, but he's going to have to turn the hearts 
of sons and children as well. I'm going to tell you something about this season. That God is going to set people in families. That's what God is looking to do. He's looking to set the solitary. God has heard the groans. God has heard the groans in the hearts of many. That they are looking for not only someone to identify with, but they are looking for someone to connect with. They are looking for someone who will be authentic with them. They are looking for someone who will be truthful for them. They are looking for someone who will correct them. Someone who will tell them wrong. Someone who will tell them no. Many in the church today, and I'm sad to say it, but we've become an entertaining sideshow. And the the words of, of correction and maturity... They've become lost things in, a, in, in the lost art within the church of Jesus today. Your connection in this day is going to be key. Your connection is going to determine your direction. You can write that down for yourself. Your connection is going to determine your direction. Mm-hmm. Whether you connect to this season, it's going to determine the direction that you head. I've been preaching and announcing this new season to you for some time. I believe that new season has arrived. Amen. I believe that new season has arrived. I've been waiting on the month of August all year long. Mm -hmm. In the month of January, when the new year rolled around, I began to pray, God, what you want me to do this year? Mm -hmm. Where do you want me to go with things? All I heard in my spirit was, wait till August. Mm -hmm. Just wait till August. Wait till August. So in February, I was like, God, what you want to do? He said, wait till August. Then in March, I said, God, what you want to do? He said, wait till August. Well, August is here. It's here, Brian. It's here. It's here. I've been waiting on the season to change. I've been waiting Mm -hmm. on the day. I've been waiting on the timing. You know, timing is very crucial and critical in the kingdom of God. Your connection to the voice of the season is going to be key to the direction that you go and the destiny of in which you are headed. I want to talk to you real quick for just a few minutes about some things. Maybe you need to write these things down for yourself. I believe one thing that God is doing in this season is he is setting people. That God is, he is making what I call a set man. Mm -hmm. God is putting set people in key places. He's putting them in different regions of the earth and places in the world. Why? Because not only God does he want a set man, but he wants a set fi- a people. Mm-hmm. He is wanting a set family. Mm-hmm. What is this? There's a connection is going to be key in this season. Isolation is going to be very deadly. This is an hour when you will not be able to isolate yourself from the body of Christ. Right. Because God is wanting to set you in a family. Right. God doesn't want to just set you in a church. He wants to set you in a family. Mm-hmm. There's a vast difference between a family and a church. Or listen real closely to me. There's a vast difference between a family and a church. Mm-hmm. You can go to church to get something. But when you're in a family, you become something. Yeah. Let me say that again. You may go to church to get something. But when you're in a family, you will become something. Yeah. Vast uh-huh. difference in getting and becoming. Mm-hmm. The kingdom is in order for you to become something. The kingdom comes in order for you to become something. God's more interested in what you become rather than what you get. He said all these things will be added to you if you seek first his kingdom. When you seek first his kingdom, you will become something. You will become somebody. You will become someone in the earth. You will become the man of God. You will become the daughter of God. You will become the sons of God. That's what the earth is looking for. Those who are becoming Yes, sir. Amen. Those who are becoming it. As many as received him, yeah. he gave them power to become yes, the did. sons of God. Yes, Thank you, Father. This yes. is something you're coming into. Yes. Yes. So what is God doing? When you begin to receive God's new season, when you begin to receive the season of the Lord, God will begin to set you. Mm-hmm. You will become a set person, a set man, a set woman. God has set people in the earth. What are those set people doing? Yes, it does. Those set people are announcing the season. This is what John the Baptist was. In order for you to be set, you have to be sent. Yeah. There was a man that was sent from God That's right. whose name was John. Mm-hmm. And John began to declare a new season that was yeah. coming to the earth. Absolutely. He said, Behold, there's one that's coming after me. Mm-hmm. Who is mightier than I? Mm-hmm. Him... I'm not worthy to unlatch it, his shoes. John was announcing the new season. 
He was announcing the season of the Son of God. Isolation will be the enemy's plan in this hour. Yes, sir. You've got to hear what I'm telling you. If God's going to set you in a family, then Satan's plan is going to be to get you isolated. That's right. Yes. Why? Because when he gets you isolated, this is when you'll begin to doubt the plan. That's yes. right. This is when you'll begin to doubt the plan. God sets you in a family for a reason. God sets you in a family for a reason. God sets you in a family for a season and for a reason. The number one reason is for connection. What is this connection? I'm going to give you five things. Write these five things down real quickly because I'm going to talk real quickly. And I'm going to go real quickly today. I need you to get this. I need you to get this. You've got to get this because you're going to be the ones that carry this. This isn't going to be the season of fathers. This is going to be the season of sons. Mm -hmm. If I'm a spiritual father in the earth, I'm giving something to sons and daughters. You're going to be the one that carries it. That's right. I explained this many months ago that when David tried to move the ark, when he tried to move it from Kirjath Jerem, and it was in the, the house of Obed Edom. Mm -hmm. They had to turn the ark into the house of Obed Edom. Obed Edom, excuse me. Why? Because he excluded someone. He excluded the sons of Levi. They were the ones that had to carry the move. They're the ones that had to carry the ark. We've tried the wrong way. Right. We've had the wrong model. It doesn't matter if you get the ox like David did. He had an ox and a cart to carry the ark. There are people that are trying to steady the movement that is man-made right now. There's people that are, are literally, they're going to get hurt. God will cause the ox, the thing that serves us, to stumble. The ministry of today has, has made it to serve us. The, the ends was, we're trying, to get, we're trying to get the move of God somewhere, but we can't get it there unless we do it God's way. That's, right. That's what David said. He said that we did not seek the Lord after due order. Right. You have to have God's order. You have to have the due order. There was someone that David forgot in the move. He went back and he found in the Word of God. There's the whole key. It has to be based in the Word of God. If it's not based in the Word of God, then it's going to fail. You can build a house, but unless the Lord is building it, it will not stand. It will fail. We have built houses that have fallen. We have built shambles and, and stick houses. But we haven't built according to God's Word and according to His pattern. David went back and got the sons of Levi and they carried the ark right into Jerusalem. That's right. Without a stumble, without a fail. This is a movement that has to be carried by the sons. So connection is going to be key. Number one. Why? Because it's in a family that you're going to know love, you're going to know acceptance, and you're going to know relationships. That's right. Number two is going to be protection. God sets you in a family for protection. Why? Because it's here that you will know the truth. You have to know the truth. It's not the truth that sets you free. It's the truth that you know that sets you free. He said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. You can have truth, but if you don't know it, you won't know freedom. Amen. It's the truth that you know. That's right. Number three is direction. If God sets you in a family in order that you will know direction. The direction is going to be a direction of faith. Right. The direction is going to be a direction of purpose. You have to have faith and purpose. Yes, you do. Amen. Number four is collection. Collection. Listen real closely to me on this. Why does God put the solitary in a family? Because God is gathering or God is making a collection. Mm -hmm. Do you know that God is a collector? Yeah. Yes, he likes to collect and he likes to gather. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 8 tells me this. I was out picking blueberries this week. And I've been picking every day almost. I've had a bumper crop this year. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I've had just clusters. Mm -hmm. Typically, I usually have to pick one by one, like mm -hmm. picking coffee beans, and it's slow and meticulous, but we've had these little big clusters, haven't we, April? And you can literally just take your hand and just rake them Amen. into the bowl. Isaiah 65 and verse 8 tells us this. The new wine is in the cluster. Mm -hmm. Look at it with me. The new wine is in the cluster. 
Why am I telling you this? As I was out picking those blueberries this week, I heard that very distinctly rise up in my spirit that the new wine is in the cluster. Isaiah 65 and verse 8 tells us, Thus says the Lord, as the new wine is found in the cluster, and one says, Destroy it not, for a blessing is in it. So will I do for my servant's sake, that I may not destroy them all. The new wine is in the cluster. Let me say it this way. A new season brings new wine. That's right. A new season brings new grapes. When the new grapes appear, they can be turned into wine. But with the new wine, you must have new wine skins. That's right. That means that the old is going to have to die. There's some old things that are going to have to die. There's some things that we're going to have to put to death. Mm -hmm. One of those things that we're going to have to put to death is our understanding of church. Listen real closely to what I'm about to tell you because some of you may not, you, at first you may say, what? But I'm going to answer this for you. You're going to have to begin to see that what's happening here, this is not a Sunday meeting with songs and sermons. That's not what this is. We've had this. Mm -hmm. We've had much of it. That's right. Chauncey, we've had it on every corner. Yep. I can go almost into any city this morning and find a Sunday gathering with a song and a sermon. That's right. But you've got to begin to see what's happening here and the transformation that is happening and the change that's happening. What is this? This is not a church meeting. This is a family that is gathering together. I'm, I'm setting a protocol for you right now that you've got to begin to get as sons and daughters in the Lord. A family is gathering. This is a family gathering. Mm -hmm. This is not a church service. This is a family gathering. God sets the solitary in families. Mm -hmm. God it didn't say he sets them in churches. He sets them in families. That's right. He sets them. God wants you to have a family mentality, mm -hmm. not a church attending mentality. He does not want you to have a consumer mentality. He doesn't want you to, to come to the house, his house, looking to get something, but looking to become something. Yeah. What are you yeah. becoming? Yeah. Right. Listen to me really closely, because this is the dynamic that begins to change. When, when you begin to understand this dynamic, you will not let anything stand in the way uh, that's right. of you gathering with the family. Amen. The family. Because you understand this, that your connection here is bigger than you getting something. Right. Your connection here is what you are becoming. Amen. Yes, what you are be The kingdom, when you are connected to the kingdom, you don't get something, you become something. That's right. But you get things too. Yes, yes you, you do. do. You get things. Yes, Good God. He said all these things will be added. You don't even have to think about the things. That's right. I just read to you from the Amplified. He brings those out of prison and brings them into prosperity. Right. Yes, yes, they do. But he sets you. Why does he set you in a family? Because God has something in mind. He has, it's in a family that you get an inheritance. Right. It's in a yep. family right. that you receive a legacy. That's it's right. in a family that yeah. you receive an identity. That's it's right. in a family that you receive your name. That's yes. Right. Amen. Elijah, you have your father's last name, right? Mm -hmm. It's because you're in a family. Mm -hmm. You begin to bear the identity. God sets you in a family to develop you and to mature you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? There's five things. Because in a family, God brings order to your life. It's in a family that God teaches you how to honor. You may not agree with your parent. You may not even like your parent. But God doesn't say either one of those are qualifiers. He says you have to honor your father and mother. And Paul takes it even further into the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. He says, honor your father and mother in the Lord. That's right. There's a vast difference between my natural parents and spiritual parents. That's right. See, some people don't understand this. They think, well, I've got a natural daddy. Why do I need a spiritual daddy? Isn't God the God, isn't he my spiritual daddy? He is your heavenly father. 
And the Bible tells us that he is the father of spirits. Mm -hmm. The reason that we have spiritual fathers is for the maturing of the soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. He becomes the father of your soul. You are spirit, yeah. soul, and body. Mm -hmm. What is a spiritual father about? He is about the shaping of the souls of his sons. He is about shaping them into mature sons in order that their soul mirrors their spirit. Amen. Mm. Wow. This is where your identity is developed. The book of 1 Peter will tell you all about this. It's in a family that you will grow. It's in a family that you will understand your purpose. To understand these dynamics, the church can become optional mm -hmm. because you may not feel that you need to get something. <laughs> I don't feel like it today. That's because you don't need to get something. When the dynamic of this hits you in your mind and you realize that this is bigger, that's right. This is bigger. What God is doing in the earth, God is, listen, Jesus said, I will build my church. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be concerned about whether he's going to build his church. Yeah. Matter of fact, the word that he used there, it's not even properly translated to church. It is the word ecclesia, which means there would be a public gathering in a public square. See, God wants to take it public. Yeah, he does. But he not only wants to take it public, he has to do this inside of his house. That's right. You don't release your sons into the world mm -hmm. in immaturity. That's right. You only release a mature son. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to enter into maturity. God did not release him. Listen to what I'm telling you. Mary came to Jesus and she said, listen, they're out of wine. Can you do something? He said, my time is not yet come. But nonetheless, That's right. uh -huh. there's always a time that you are released into the earth by God. You have to be released by God yeah. as a son into the earth. Amen. This is the thing, listen to me very closely, beloved. This is the very thing that Satan is the most afraid of with you. Is that you will develop into a mature son yeah, right. or daughter who knows who you are. Yeah. Who knows what you possess. Yeah, that's right. When you know who you are, it can nobody Woo. convince you of anything that's different. Right. You don't need anybody else's affirmation. No. Amen. No pats on the back. No. You don't need anybody to come <laughs> along and say you this or that and peanut butter and candy bars too. Right. All you need is the affirmation of your father. That's right. Amen. That's it. Yes, sir. When daddy says, this yeah, is my Beloved son. Listen to him. Yeah, sorry. That's when dad says, That's right. it's the season of the son. I'm going to sit down and I don't have to say anything because the son is going to say everything that I said. Yeah, right. He's going to do yeah. everything that I... There's no concern. Mm -hmm. There's no concern. That's the mature son in the earth. The spotlight comes on to the sun. I hope you're hearing this. Because when you begin to get that this is a kingdom thing, it becomes a must to you. This is a must to me. When you have heard the Spirit of God and He has spoken to you very clearly, I don't need another word of confirmation. Right. And the Bible tells us in Hebrews that in, the, in the, the days before, that he spoke to us through the prophets. He spoke to our fathers through the prophets. Mm -hmm. But now he has spoken unto us through his son. That's right. This is father, son, son to father, mm -hmm. father, son. Mm -hmm. Do you get the pattern? Yeah. Do you see what I'm saying? When you understand that this is a kingdom thing and this is a kingdom connection, this is the reason that I will get in my car this week and I will drive to Florida and I will sit in my spiritual father's home 
because he's called his sons to come home. Come to Florida this week. Come, come home. I have something that I want to say. This is the reason that I will spend hundreds of dollars, rent a car, get a hotel room, whatever I have to do. If I have to buy a because I understand that this is a must. Because I understand, listen to me real closely. When the church begins to get this, you will not, we will begin to trend. I'm not saying that we don't need pastors, evangelists, uh, apostles, prophets. I'm not saying we don't need any of that. Those things are gifts. Those things are functions. But this is how the church has, if the church has learned to function off of gifts and not out of purpose. It has learned to function without fathers. Mm. A household that runs without a father. father. Y'all better hear what I'm telling you. Because the church has been pampered. It's been mothered. It's been nurtured. But it has not been corrected. It has not received instructions. It has not received identity. Mm. We still have the people that are, are born again but have an orphan mindset because they are fatherless. That's right. That's Why right. is this a must for me? Why is this a must for me? I will get in my car and drive because I know that God has graced somebody in the earth to speak into my life right. and will tell me when I'm wrong and will tell me no and I'm held accountable to that person. And that person will also speak to me in love. They will speak to me in wisdom and they will speak to me the grace of God. Mm -hmm. let, let, me, let me say it in these ways. Elisha understood this principle. I talked to you about this last week. You may be satisfied with certain places. This is why Elijah took Elisha to four different places. He said, I'm leaving here. I hope you hear what I'm saying. I'm leaving here. Where am I going to leave you at, though? Am I going to leave you at Gilgal? Am I going to leave you with the prophets? Maybe being a prophet is enough for you. Maybe you want to prophesy. Elisha said, no, that's not good enough for me. That's not enough. I need to go more. I want something more here. Yeah. So he took him to Bethel. And when he got to Bethel, the sons of the prophets, they said, wait, you're Elisha. You're the protege. You're the, the son, the spiritual son of Elijah. Elijah said to him, stay here, son. See, some people, they would want recognition in the house of God. That Bethel is house of God. You, you want to be recognized. There's a lot of people, they want to be recognized. They want to get a platform. They, they want an international ministry, a, a TV show. Maybe that's enough for you. You want the sons of the prophets to recognize you. Stay here, Elisha. Elisha says, no, I'm going where you're going. That's right. See, you got to understand, you've got, you got to go where the spiritual father is going. He'll bring you to stopping points and ask you, is this enough? So he says, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. He gets to Jericho. Elisha is still with him. He says, stay here. The sons of the prophets were there too. Those sons are everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> I never saw their father though. There's a lot of people that, that will follow around the movement, but they won't connect to the movement. That's right. They will think that they understand the movement. Here comes the danger when the, the, the new season and spiritual fathering is it's already coming to the forefront. I'm telling you this now because I'm starting to see trickles of it coming out. And people talking about, well, that's my son in the Lord and that's, that's my daughter in the Lord. And I, I see this and, and 10 and 20 years from now, this will be commonplace conversation. But here's the problem with it. Whenever people hear a, something new and they hear a new sound, it can become a fad to them. Yeah. And when it becomes a fad and it becomes a new thing, then everybody wants to get on that train. Right. And they want to ride that train because it becomes profitable to them. Oh, I'm so-and-so son of the Lord. There's a lot of people, they're trying to gather themselves to a, a big name person in order that they might get recognized. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? That's why Elisha was taken to Bethel so that he would be recognized. Is that enough for you? No. No. No, that's not enough for me. No. So I take you to Jericho. It's always the place of spoil and, and riches. A city that survived possibly 27 times being destroyed and four times rebuilt on a whole different uh, foundation. 
How many cities could survive that? When Joshua left there, they left there with spoils. They left there with rich. So much so that, that Achan, he said, I'm going I'm to keep some for myself. There was a lot of treasure. Always a lot of treasures in Jericho. Is that enough for you? Is prosperity enough for you? Is it for you to get wealth and finances in the earth? Is that enough for you? No, it's not. No, that's not enough. Elijah, I'm going where you're going. He said, then we're going across the Jordan River. We're going to cross the Jordan. What is Jordan? Jordan is a death. It is a death. It is a place of death. Everything that flows down the Jordan River, it flows into the Dead Sea. But when Elijah got there, he took his mantle off. You would thought he was going to give it to Elijah. That's not what he did. He looked into the waters, and he took his mantle, and he smote the waters. And when he smote his image and he smote his, the waters, it says the waters parted. And Elijah crossed over on dry ground. And Elisha crossed over with him. And it says that the sons of the prophets stood afar off. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> now do it. <laughs> What's happening now? <laughs> what money and fame and recognition enough? No, 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 no. It was only at that point that the spiritual father looked at the spiritual son and said, what may I do for you? Mm -hmm. Ask. Whatever you want, but ask. Here's what Elisha said. I don't want your mail. Mm -hmm. I don't want your money. I don't want your mystery. That's right. I don't want your ministry. That's right. I want your spirit. Yes, yes, yes. When you read double portion of your spirit, it means you become his clone. Mm -hmm. You become his twin. If it's possible for God to recreate your spirit, the spirit of who you are, then let me have... He wasn't asking you to become two times as much as Elijah. See, that's what some people say. Like. They want to become two times as much as somebody else. I want to be, he's saying, I want to be just like you. That is the total portrait of the, of the whole Old and New Testament, is that you become just like your father. I want your spirit. He said, well, if you see me when I go up, it'll be granted to you. You've got to see. You've got to be there to see. You have to continue on. You have to keep the connection. And what happened? In a moment's time came the chariots and the horses. And what happened? The mantle fell. Mantles remain on the earth. But he didn't just receive the mantle. He received the spirit of Elijah. And the spirit of Elijah, it, that is what God said in Malachi. He was going to send Elijah again. Why? Because Elisha lost the mantle. Man, if y'all ever get this. Elisha did not pass on what he received from Elijah. You've got to have, you've got to have a bigger vision here than yourself. Right. And just receiving what daddy's got. You've got to receive what God has beyond you. Mm -hmm. This is why the prophets never walked in power anymore. They only walked in the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. After Elijah and Elisha, they didn't walk in the power of God anymore. They walked only in the word of the Lord. That's why Jesus said there was none greater than John the Baptist. Of all the prophets, there was none greater. Why? <laughs> because he became the new Elijah in the earth. Hallelujah. And he was pointing to the son and pointing to the father. He was pointing back to father, son. This was the pattern from the very beginning. God made Adam to be a son. The son chose to do opposite of the father. The connection was broken. So God sent his son yes, in the likeness of sinful flesh. But he wasn't bearing the image of flesh. He wasn't bearing the image of sin. He was bearing the image of the Father. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And the image was smoked. So here's the whole thing with that. 
Some people, some people, they, they, they get weirded out about this because they say, well, you're making this too much about man. God made this whole thing about man. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Ain't that the truth? Yes, he did. Jesus, when he walked around, said, I'm the son of man. That's right, he did. God made this so much about man that he became a man and died as a man. That's right, amen. Because he loved man. Yes, That's right. Because he loves man. Yes. God has set his affection on man. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why he did it. He just did. He chose to because he wanted to. That's Stop right. arguing Thank with you. God. God loves you that much Thank that you. he would leave everything, right. come in the form of a, a man. And not even just a man. He humbled himself even below a, the uh, son and even below the angels and became in the form of a servant. A servant, a servant doesn't have an inheritance. That's right. Mm -hmm. God sets the solitary in families. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. you can go to church Amen. to get something, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to connect to the kingdom to become something. That's Amen. right. Amen. This is about kingdom. This is about God and his kingdom of sons. Mm hmm. Mm. In the kingdom of his dear son. Yeah. That's what this is about. Mm -hmm. That's why I said this is the most important message I'll ever speak in my life. Because this is about the kingdom of his son mm -hmm. and sons. You are those sons. Yeah. You've got to make the transition now. That this isn't churchianity, churchianity anymore. This is the household of faith. Yeah. And I must connect. See, I have to be connected to the voice of my spiritual father. I have to, to be hearing what he's saying. And I understood that when I could not listen to him, then he's written books. And I can connect to his voice. Why? Because he's graced. He's not everybody's father, but he's mine. And that's what you have to understand. <laughs> Right. And I'm not everybody's daddy, mm -hmm. but I'm somebody's. That's right. And when I'm somebody's daddy, and you know, it's only the son that can recognize the father. Yeah. I will never come to you. A true father in the Lord will never come to you and say, you're my son. Elisha shows that. Elijah never said, my son, my son. It was Elisha that said, my father, my father. Mm -hmm. You have to recognize up. Why? Because you have to give honor where honor is due. That's what you learn in a family. You learn how to honor your father and mother in the Lord. That's right. You have to honor them. What does honor do? Honor gives you access to them. Honor gives you access to a father. Yeah. Wherever honor is broken, access is closed. That's right. If I don't honor my, my spiritual father, do you see the mirror of this in the earth? How can you tell me that you are submitted to God and you can't even submit to a spiritual father? If you Amen. can't follow That's his right. correction and instruction, how are you going to follow God's? That's right. Absolutely. I mean, it's... Somebody asked me the other day, why do you wear long sleeves all the time? Because my spiritual father told me to. The dumbest question that I would have asked is why? That's when you begin to question authority. If you can't receive authority, how are you going to walk in authority? If you can't, re it, it takes receiving authority to walk in faith. That's what Jesus said to the centurion. I haven't seen so great a faith, Jamie. Why? Because this man said, I'm a man under authority, and I have people under my authority. And when I say this, they go. They don't say why. They just say, yes, sir. That's right. Sir, yes, sir. I, I go. This is why Paul identified Timothy as his son. This is why Paul identified Titus as his son. Read the Bible. Read it for yourself. He didn't call them his disciples. He said, my own son in the faith. That's right. My son. He called Onesimus. When he wrote to Philemon, he said, I know you're going to do what I tell you, Philemon, because Onesimus is now my son in the Lord. When I read the book of 1 Peter this week, I noticed that he called Marcus his son. Peter said, my son Marcus. Mark that wrote the New Testament book of Mark. 
was the son of Peter, the spiritual son of Peter. This is how the apostle John talked to Gaius. They didn't call them their constituents or their patrons or their church members. They called them their sons. He right. said, Gaius, my own son in the faith. He said, I don't have any greater joy than that my children, That's right. my yep. children. That's yep. right. The apostle John wasn't married, folks. He called the people there his children. That I have no greater joy than that my children walk in truth. That's right. Why? Because they know the truth. John wrote that. They will know the truth and the truth will make them. Why? Why is it so important for my sons and daughters in the Lord to know the truth? Because I know it is there that they will walk in freedom. Right. Amen. They will be free to be who they are. Yeah without trying to get anybody else to like. You don't need anybody else to like you or love you or accept you. That's right. That's right. Amen. Paul was so confident about this that when he wrote to the Ephesians, he said, I'm sending my son Timothy down there. And I have complete confidence in him. That he will instruct you in the same manner that I would. Right. What's he saying? Son's going to say what father says. That's right. yep. he, he said, Timothy, you know my doctrine, my faith, my manner of life, my purpose. You know everything about me. Why? Because you walk just like me. You talk just like me. You sound just like me. If you want to, the, the church throws around these little ideas about oneness and unity and having one heart, one mind, one spirit, that's where it's collected at in the family. People tell me, you stand like your daddy stood. <coughs> it becomes your DNA. Listen to You don't do it on purpose. It just happens. I, I, I called up my spiritual father one day and I said, I, I know it now. If you listen to me, uh, I'm not being a plagiarist here. Please. I, I, I'm not. He said, no, stop. Stop right there. Stop it. He said, you are doing exactly what I discovered years ago. You will begin to say what your father says yeah, right. and do what your father does. Yes, sir. So it's not plagiarism here. You become, you say what your father says. You, it just becomes in your DNA. You start saying it without, and you, you, you not even, I didn't have to put quotations that, that daddy said this. Because it, it, you, it just becomes a part of you. It starts coming out of you. See, that's how God wants his word. He wants his word so embedded in you that you're saying what the Father says. You're doing what the Father does. You don't even think about it. it it's, it's so ingrained into your soul. Yes, you got brainwashed. But that's exactly what you needed was to wash away all the old and get the new in. That's what God did. God didn't want to write this in stone. He said, I want to write it in tables of flesh. I want it in your heart. Because if it's in your heart, it'll be in your mouth. Right. And if it's in your mouth, it will be in your thinking. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you what, you think about is what you bring about. And what you bring about is because you're saying it. Right. You have what you say. That's what Jesus said. Right. You will have what you say. You know why you have what you say? Because that's what you think about. Yeah. You always walk around saying, I'm, I'm broken. I can't ever get by. And it is. You're going to have. That's what you're going to have. Exactly. That's exactly. what you're going to have. You know why you don't have that? Because that's the way you think. Amen. And you know why you think that? It's because that's the way you believe. You believe that. Mm -hmm. But when somebody else comes along and believes something different, and they say what God says, God says that he will make the prisoners to prosper. Yes. Well, he was talking about me. And he was talking about me when he said he was going to set the solitary in the family because I'm in a family. I'm in a family. I'm under a father who has a father. His spiritual father is in South Africa, and he has many sons. And everyone is accountable one to another here. Do you see the structure, order, pattern, all of this following suit? You don't have problems. You don't have church divides. Have you ever noticed this? You've never seen a Catholic church divide. You know why? They don't identify him as pastor. They don't elect him. What do they call him? Father. They call him Father. Now, I ain't sitting there saying I agree with the Catholic Church, but they have something there that you don't, and we don't understand as Protestants. They identify that man as a father. And they can't vote him out if they disagree with him. <laughs> now, I ain't saying that they do everything right, but I'm telling you, when you pick up on that thing, That's right. you know, even sometimes a swine can have a gold ring in his snout. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. 
I'm looking for the treasure. I ain't looking for the, the bacon. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for what they, you know, what have they got here? Oh my God. Even Rahab the harlot had some scarlet thread that got her out of a mess. Sure did. Yep. There was a reason a lot of men went to Jericho. That's why there was a lot of money flowing there. <laughs> There was a lot of harlots there. Well, never mind. Mm -hmm. I'll go on from that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I want you to know that God is setting you in a family. Yeah, yeah. And that family is a set family. <laughs> it becomes a set family in the earth. You have been set in the family mm -hmm. in order to be set in the earth. And you are set in the earth in order to be seasoned in the earth. And that seasoning is that you begin to proclaim the season. This is your time to start proclaiming the season. Yes, I've been proclaiming it, but now you need to proclaim it. You need to begin to tell people. There's a whole lot of people that y'all know. They, they saved, sanctified, and even filled with the Holy Ghost. But they don't know that there's a new season in the earth. Mm, that's right. This is the season that God is bringing people into. And he wants to bring in many sons. Not everybody will be, in it, be able to enter it because they're going to hold on to the new. Because when they've drunk old wine, they're going to think that the old wine is better. But this is a new season with new wine and a new wine skin. And you can't put this, listen to me real close, this is the whole thing. You can't take this new wine that I'm right. telling you about and put it into an old wine skin. It'll burst it. That's right. It'll burst the whole church mentality that's going on. This won't work in a mega church. You know why? Because you can't have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with a mega pastor. That's right. You can't. He can't effectively follow you. It's impossible. Jesus, that's why Jesus had 12. I mean, once you get to 12, you you about maxed out there. Yeah. You, can't, you can't give of yourself but to so many people. Why? Because you're limited with time. That's right. that's right. Yes, sir. And you're going to have to be honest with some people. That's right. Some people, they may not begin to identify you. There's somebody, listen real closely to me. There is somebody in the earth that is destined to be your son and daughter in the Lord. That you're going to train, you're going to raise up, because that's the whole that's the whole mentality behind this. I'm not here to father everybody. Mm -hmm. You are. You're going to father them. That's right. If you had Philip, if you had twelve sons in the Lord, Joe, if you had twelve, do you know how many people that begins to affect? Mm -hmm. Twelve times twelve times twelve times twelve times twelve times twelve times. That's how the early church spread so fast. Because they began to identify as a family. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing else will multiply in the earth like a family. That's right. Because God already spoke it. Be fruitful and multiply. That's right. It'll start multiplying real quick. You don't have to worry about church growth. I'm not going to hold family growth seminars. Don't need to. <laughs> all, all you need to do is walk as a mature son. Walk as a son. Be a good son. Stay connected. That's my whole last break. I'm going to be a good son. That's enough. I don't need to do anything else. Just be a good son. That's right. Perfect that. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Perfect that. And it won't be long. That's right. All right. Let's stand on our feet today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to drop this something right here into your ears because I, I need you to hear this. I need you to hear this. Because I believe that this will, this has to happen in your life, but it also will happen in your life. God can anoint you. God can anoint you in private. God can anoint you in the house of your father. I'm taking this from David. God sent Samuel to anoint David to become next king, and he did it in his father's house. It was done in the house, in private. And it was not a public event. Nobody was invited to the anointing. But he was anointed. Listen real closely. You get anointed in your father's house. Mm -hmm. But just because you get anointed in your father's house doesn't mean that you ascend to your position. There's something else that had to happen. David, when he went to the place called Hebron, after all the hell he had been through, with Saul and everybody else trying to kill him, listen, when the, the devils are not repelled by the anointing, they're drawn to it. 
So don't think because you got anointing. That's right. That's I'm right. anointed. Well, so was David. That's right. Devils will come to the anointing. Mm -hmm. They're drawn to it, mm -hmm. just like people are. Mm -hmm. But they're drawn there for a different reason. That's right. But here's what has to happen. This had to have there's a second anointing that has to happen. The people had to anoint David as their leader. That's what happened. That's when David entered in. David did not enter. You hear what I'm telling you? You have to come into an agreement with God. Yes, yes. David never entered into his kingship until he went to Hebron. And the people, all the people it says they had gathered to him, those who were in debt, those who were discontented, and those who were depressed, they gathered themselves to him, and they anointed David to become king over them. You have to anoint the leader. You have to, when God shows you, when God says, because David became the father of Israel, you have to anoint that person. You have to say, I'm in agreement with you, God. That's where you have to go with this. Mm -hmm. That's why when God said to me, this is who you're looking for. And I said, who? And he said, him. That's who I'm looking for. Okay, I thought I was looking for a thing. I was looking for a person and didn't know it. When, when God points the person, this is valuable to you to carry the rest of your life. And the reason I'm telling you this is because you will receive an anointing here. This is a father's house. You will receive a, you will receive a father's anointing in a father's house. You got that? Yes, sir. Yes, you got it. But here's what has to happen. You have to take that anointing out of the father's house and people have to begin to accept you as their leader and they have to anoint you. That's the important part of that. That's when you become a set man and you become a set person in the region. You become a set person in the region. That's what God's doing with you. You get anointed in the father's house you're going to go out of the Father's house yeah. with the message of the season, mm -hmm. and then people are going to accept you. Mm -hmm. You, They have to receive you right. to become a son. Mm -hmm. Got to get yeah. that. You got, they have to receive you. If they don't receive you, what did Jesus say to do? Go on. Move on. That's right. Don't waste your time That's with right. people who won't listen. That's right. Amen. Listen, listen to me, all sons and daughters. <laughs> they ain't listen to you. Move on. Yes. You ain't got time to waste. Mm -hmm. right. Let's get it done. That's right. Start telling people that a new season's here. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people they want to hear that. They're, they're, they're tired of where they've been. That's right. There are people that they've been yeah. sitting in church all That's their right. life. Mm -hmm. Been listening to the same songs, sermons, and hymns That's all. Right. And they ain't never, oh, Lord have mercy. They want something new. There's a lot of people out here, they, so they want something it. different. They want something new. They're looking. Right. They don't know where to look. Right. They don't know where to go. You got to go tell them. Mm -hmm. You got to tell them. New day is here. New That's season right. is here. It's the season of the sons and daughters. That's you. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. Thank you Lord. We're so thankful to have a gracious yes. Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 